Well, it's been a long old day. I'm recording this at night. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> but the balloon, I thought I'd tell you about the balloon. Well, it went really well. It was exciting. Uh, it was it was pretty much everything I hoped it would be. And we got it back. And I thought I would share some of it with you. Um, I'll give you some clips from the day. And um, at the end, I'll show you what the flight path was. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, hey guys, so today is launch day of the high altitude balloon and these guys are doing some prep behind me. That is Sam and Conan and Mambir there. Um, they're just launching, they're like prepping the launch site. And we're reasonably confident it's all going to work out. Is that right, Sam? Hopefully. Yeah, I think we're, we're pretty confident it's going to work out. Uh, and we've got lots of well, all our kit down here. There's like a super awesome toolbox over here. Which I'm kind of jealous of. We're just sort of getting started. We're waiting for the helium to arrive. Just had a spot of rain. Um, so we've turned over the mats and we've probably got a tiny 10 minute window to work in, which means we're gonna lay out the balloon now which is in that silver bag over there. That'll get inflated along here. While Sam and Conan, these are the, the students from the Electronics Club, they're going to put the payload together. This is a radar reflector, stops planes, well, makes planes able to see the, the payload. Uh, and there's the payload just there. That's the polystyrene box that's in there. Not sure where all the electronics are. I think they're just down there somewhere. So this is our a gyroscope with our GPS uh, and it sort of yes. holds it up in the right direction. So, um, uh, you, whoa! You did not tie it well at all. No, I did not. Dilip here has just um, sorted out, so uh, he's taped it in really. It's a little bit of a bodge, but I think it'll work really well. <laughs> I mean, that's all, all engineering projects start with a bodge. Yeah. Conan and Sam are there <laughs> trying to put the, um, the uh, radar reflector together and we're actually getting the blue going so this is kind of a first for the electronic club at dmu it's the first time we've done a balloon or anything like that how are you feeling about it sam a bit nervous but i'm hoping for the best conan what do you think i'm having fun <laughs> okay <laughs> it's fair to say that none of us have a lot of experience with this, if any at all. So this is going pretty well. We think. The rain's holding off, just. This is uh, Mambir, he's the one filling the balloon, and it's quite unwieldy. We've got Dilip, he's controlling the valve. Ashok is on his knees, making sure that balloon doesn't fly all over the place. Mark's helping out there, and Prakash is there as well. Just making sure that balloon behaves itself. But it actually, I mean, kind of looks like a balloon. There's a little, let's see if I can focus on that. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, just the noises that thing makes are hilarious. You're recording it. <laughs> I mean, no one actually talks about the noises. <laughs> the noises this thing makes. Hold it down. 
Right, so we're just about, you're going to have to ignore the noises. We're just about ready to uh, sort the payload out. So we've got the payload all powered up and we're just going to check the, change the port on here to COM3. We're going to check the data coming out of the payload. So, uh, I can't really see it, it's pretty difficult. Oh, there we go, just about. Uh, so you can see we've got data coming in. There's the uh, exact position. Our temperature sensor is reading incorrectly. We're going to try and correct that uh, in the data later. So, all good, hopefully. Uh, we're about to do the most dangerous part. <laughs> is that right, Sam? Yeah. Tying off the balloon. So I'm going to leave the camera here and I'm going to go and help. So I'll let you guys watch. Right, so it's just about to get launched. So we've done all the difficult bit, which is filling up the balloon and tying everything off. In fact, Connor and Connor and brother and Sam did that really, really well. So that's our payload there. Sam's holding that. Connor has got the line and everything, and Mambit is going to let go of the balloon. So let's see it. Oh, they're going to do it. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Right, guys, let's tidy up. Well, we got something right. <laughs> it went up. It went up. Are you guys happy? Yep. It launched. I kind of want it to pop. I can't even see it now. The camera won't pick it up. Oh, there it is. There it goes. There she goes. Quite excited now. Can't wait for it to come oh. Look at it, look at it on the camera. Tiny little balloon in the distance. <laughs> Shall we see if we can ping it on the GPS?
Right, so it's landed. It we're, has. we're rushing now from having lunch to go and pick it up. Yes. Where is it? Landed from? Uh, St. Edmunds, which is near Westbridge. Have you got it on your phone? I have. I'm going to look at the little data points. So while Sam is playing about with his phone, logging in to the website, uh, we're currently in Peterborough, this is Queensgate we're walking into, and we just went for a pizza, and now we've had to rush out because it's landed on the side of a road, potentially. Well, looks like. Okay, so Leicester's over here somewhere, Peterborough's about here, Whispers is here, and this is where our balloon has landed. Sweet! Okay. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Within, We're about within a mile. You know, about one and a half miles now. It's the right. Yeah. 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 Hunting for it. Yeah. And then step on the crops. Because there's trying to pass out and fall down. <laughs> yes, that. And like. It's sort of over there, unfortunately. Look. Are you showing on that side? Yeah, if you have a look, that, um, that red thing is where the GPS is. And we're here, but my compass is terrible. So it's sort of over there. Was actually into the field. Yeah. Not too far. We're a little bit further up and then I'm just going to walk, take a straight line across. Uh, um... I think I found it! Come on kids! <laughs> hey. Do a bit of a run Ashok, come on! Sam! Get a wriggle on! The logo's wrong, which was how he lifted, yeah? Yeah, I'm not going to open that. I'll put it open. Hey, I can't, that. It's brilliant. That's amazing. We found it. Sam's not here yet. I'm waiting for Sam to get over here so we can look at the paper. There it is. Somewhere there. Oh, camera's still on. I forgot all about that. <laughs> Do we want to get into it and find out? <laughs> oh, let's take it back to the car so we don't... Uh... Okay, oh, yeah, God. It wasn't far at all, was it? Uh, yeah, we are opening up the payload to see what everything's like inside and to see... Not what, it's very cold. If the GoPro is, yeah, it's it quite is, cold. It is cold. The GoPro is still running. Yeah. That's the last bit of tape. Yeah, Ow. I think we're in. Oh, yeah. we are. Oh, look at that. Okay, so there's everything. Let's take the uh, the very good spot GPS. Worked quite well. So, Camera is still recording. Good, good. Is everything really cold inside? It is cold. Yeah, it is. Oh, you can feel the heat from the batteries, though. 
Well, that's good. That's probably really helped it. Oh God, yeah, I can feel the, the cold hang in on. there. We'll have to get that. We need to get the um this part Ooh. out first. Which yeah. hang on. Sensor. So this is the construction oh, of sensor. the payload. It was yeah. foamed in. Foamed in. Dilip's uh, idea. Dilip's idea. There. Well done. And uh, we've got all these little modules that are sort of zip taped to it. And our, our battery pack, which yep. Ashok made. Uh, so they're just two LiPo cells connected to some boost circuits. Hi right, guys, well done. Okay, so this is weird. Mammy's gonna celebrate rather than champagne or something. <laughs> that didn't quite work as I imagined. <laughs> well done, everyone. No one's gonna eat the cakes. You might want to have a look at the flight path. So you see that little red dot there? That's where we started from. Just down here. This is our launch site, this little uh, football field just here. This uh, map is a little bit out of date. It's sort of changed a bit since then, but we were just here filling up the balloon. So we've got a couple of data points, but the important bit is that uh, we've got tracking data for most of the journey. Now I say most because uh, the GPS won't work above a certain altitude. So if I scroll through a bit, you can see where this area is called Beaumont Lees here in Leicester. And we've got tracking all the way out over Leicester and out into the countryside. We're going further and further out. We're going past a place called John O'Gaunt, which is lovely. It's got just down here um, you can't see this in 3D view, unfortunately, but it's got a, a viaduct that runs along here. Really big and old, huge, like five story tall thing. It's awesome. Anyway, back to this. Now, unfortunately, there's no, no altitude data here, so you can't see these above the ground. And that's a little bit of a problem. It was annoying, um, but it turns out we recorded, I say we, like it's someone else's fault. I recorded speed instead of altitude. And that's because I uh, picked up the wrong part of the NMEA data. So uh, my fault, but the speed was interesting nonetheless. So our average speed, including these points here, across the, uh, the journey was, let's have a little look, was 46 miles per hour. That's 74 kilometers per hour. Now the data you get from the GPS comes out in knots. So it was, uh, uh, 40 knots was the average and 58 knots was the top speed and I'll sh show you where our top speed was in a second. So we're going along here, we've got more tracking. You know, when we launched this balloon, we, <laughs> we were worried that um, we were going to land in someone's back garden or something. But, uh, you know, looking at the map now, it's kind of clear, obvious to me that we're more likely to have uh, landed in a field because there's lots of that going on. Anyway, up to point 66, this is where we lose our GPS data. That means the balloon's gone a lot higher than the GPS will work. We also lost data on the spot GPS. So we had two methods of recording GPS, the spot tracker, spot personal tracker to get um, location information, and this GPS, which was meant to record location and altitude. However, it co recorded location and speed. Um, not necessarily a problem. We just can't be entirely sure where the balloon burst, um, but we can make a very educated guess on that. So the balloon continues on. We get one extra data point here somehow. Um, we don't get any on the, uh, the spot thing here at this point either, uh, but uh, 67 is just a random one that popped up somehow. And then we've got 68. This is where the balloon started to descend. So somewhere around here, the balloon burst. Um, it could even be this one here, but um, um, but really we don't know for sure, but the footage is just awesome, so we're, we're happy enough. Now, we start descending here, and at point 80, just here, we reached a maximum speed of, our maximum speed, the top speed that we got to was 66 miles per hour, and that's 107 kilometers an hour, so that is just, uh, that's just very, very quick. I didn't expect it to get to that kind of speed, but um, you'll see we keep continued plotting uh, points here. We're descending now, we've got the, the parachutes working, and then we land somewhere over here. This is near a place called Sutton St. James. There we go, that's, that's probably the closest. 
This is this area is called the Fens, and it's next to a place called the Wash, which is the sea. Now, when it get when it got to around here, we weren't sure how fast it was going because the spot GPS does not report speed. Um, we could see that the points were still fairly far apart. Um, so this is every five minutes. That's how fast it was going on. We were really worried that it was going to make it to the sea, but luckily it didn't. And it landed in a field just here next to a public road, which is great. And we we're able to use one of the farmer's tracks to come down and grab it, which meant we weren't disturbing anyone's property really. Um, there's no obvious place where the farm would be, so we could have gone to ask permission, but it was uh, an easy get, so we didn't have to do too much trespassing. <laughs> anyway, we're very, very pleased with the result really happy to see that data on a map here and we really look forward to doing the next one.